Let's talk about some charts on that basic attention token for Brave New Coin. So Brave is a browser, not to be confused with Brave New Coin, which is a clone of Firefox. The creator founder is the previous head of Firefox, creator of Firefox, I believe, Brendan Eich. That did an ICO a while back. They chose Ethereum over BTC because they, at the time, said that the transaction fees on BTC were too high to support microtransactions, which at the time they were correct. Um, retrospectively, I haven't heard or seen any comments from Brendan at the moment regarding ETH fees, but they are clearly causing a bottleneck for any BAT transactions. Just in my own personal interactions with uh, BAT, I can't remove them from wherever they're sitting because it's just several multiples more in ETH to move them. So they're basically worthless because I can't use them as intended for microtransactions. And they will tell you, just wait for the fees to go down. But, you know, what's the point, right? At the end of the day, <laughs> what's the point of having this this great idea and this great tool? The browser's great. Don't get me wrong. The browser has had issues with privacy and claiming privacy through Tor. They're usually quick to respond to any of those issues. They've had issues with injecting ref links into the browser, which they've addressed. Um, you know, so they've they've done some things that people weren't happy about, which have been corrected. But at the end of the day, I think people who use Brave are happy with it. They're happy with the product. I think the idea is great. Essentially, essentially you're using a token to pay people to view content uh, or pay, pay the creators versus selling people ads. So on paper, it's a great idea. They did an ICO. It's got a bajillion tokens in circulation. You know, for me, it's hard to treat that as anything other than a temporary utility token in that I want to sell it as soon as, as soon as I get it into something else that has a store of value. If we look at the publishers or the, the content creators who are signed up under Brave, now they had been subsidizing these creators for quite a while. That ended and got restarted sometime this year, January, February. So these curves all look super generous leading up into 2020, 2021, when those subsidies temporarily ended. Uh, nonetheless, they've had impressive numbers everywhere else. They were around during the YouTube ad apocalypse when a bunch of accounts were getting banned or demonetized in various ways. So they're positioned in the public narrative very well. But the reality is, again, the transaction costs on ETH right now are just crippling for microtransactions. So if you're bullish bat, you want to see creators continue to increase. You want to see problems on YouTube continue to increase. You want to see demonetization and deplatforming continuing to increase because all of that's going to push people towards alternatives such as Brave and Bat. Uh, like I already mentioned, the free, flo free float supply is 1.4 billion, which means the market cap is also very high. Um, You'd have to look a little deeper as far as what percentage of coins remain vested by the company or the people who were involved in the ICO. I don't have that information readily available. But that's all going to play a part in how far this can really go at the end of the day. Um, what's actually playing a part in this as well is creators like me who receive the bat and can't move it. So it's effectively locked. You know, they're, they're sending bat to people that can't be moved. So... In a sense, the supply is just kind of sitting there, and that's bullish. It's a terrible effect of the transaction mechanism, but it's bullish for the price because fees are far greater than these individual microtransactions. So, you know, from that perspective, there's some weird bullish interaction there. <laughs> um, if we look at the total transaction counts and average transaction values, transaction counts have still continued to increase slightly throughout mid Mid last year into early this year, despite ETH fees being astronomical. If we really zoom into post 2019, most of this is most likely uh, these weekly or monthly payouts on the subsidies or Brave paying the creators in BAT. Anytime you see spikes like this, it's, there's usually an underlying mechanism, whether it be minor payouts or proof of stake payouts or, in this case, BAT creator payouts, stuff like that. There's usually a reason behind it. Um, it's not necessarily organic. There's clearly a floor that, that rises and falls, and that's probably the true transaction count. 
So you can see that fell pretty dramatically. I believe this was when the subsidies, the creator subsidies fell off and they're, they've added one again, I believe. So that's why it's rising again. You're going to see people asking, you know, is bat DeFi or bat is DeFi? Why don't you consider it DeFi? Um, that's up to you and your personal outlook on DeFi, but I wouldn't consider it DeFi. I think if it's in the DeFi conversation, that'll have effects for price. If people consider it DeFi, then they will be adding it to their DeFi baskets or whatever else, you know, however you want to think of this. If you think it's DeFi and the market thinks it's DeFi, then it's going to move, rise and fall at DeFi. Average transaction value is continuing to rise, likely a Ethereum network uh, fee effect. You're just you're going to see fewer smaller transactions because fees are higher. So transactions rising uh, is bullish, perhaps a metric of speculation more so than organic creators being paid out in bat stuff like that. If you look at NVT in the line here, let's go to the 30-day NVT in the line and Active addresses in the fill. Active addresses have waxed and waned. Currently, they are rising, which should be bullish. NVT overall has had a negative trend, a uh, declining trend over time, which should be viewed as bullish as well, even though you can't really look at NVT like you can with BTC because there's, you know, there's, there, there's tons of payouts going on. There's tons of purposeful on chain transactions that are going to affect NVT. So, Relative to where it was in 2018, 2017, we are bullish. Relative to other chains, it's irrelevant because it's a completely different mechanism compared to BTC or ETH or anything like that. So you can't be bearish on the coin price when the metrics look like this because everything that's rising is rising. Everything that's falling should be falling. If we look at Google Trends for basic attention token, those have been rising to all-time highs-ish, near all-time highs, kind of back and forth now over the past week or so, but Overall rising Google Trends should be bullish. If we look at Brave Browser, that continues to rise as a function of people being concerned with privacy, maybe. I don't know. You can you can ascribe all sorts of narratives you want. People being fed up with Chrome, um, fed up with Firefox, I don't know, wanting to earn money in times of corona. All in all, people seeking alternatives sh should be bullish for Brave. If you look at some technicals, 5,200 EMAs, yearly pivots, VP, VR, volume, and RSI. So BAT is currently sitting at a multi-year high. And to me, the trend trader, I view this entire price history as a massive range. So if you like trading ranges, this is a great coin for you. You're buying like Doge, right? You're buying the lows at 13 sats. You're selling the highs at 100 plus sats. Very similar situation here. I would be weary to expect further highs out of BAT. My suspicion is that this January, February move was more related to BAT being considered DeFi somehow, or BAT being less than a dollar. Heavy integer bias here, heavy self-fulfilling prophecy here in regards to rotation amongst penny stocks, essentially, right? Like you can buy 10 trillion BAT versus half a BTC. People are going to rotate towards stuff like that. Like I already mentioned, the fees are crippling the actual utility of this. So this is probably just speculative fever. Uh, there's no VPVR support per se until 35, 40 cents. Yearly pivot support at 42 cents. 200 day moving average at 30 cents. All these local highs could be considered support as well. Resistance is going to be all time high in any of these yearly pivots on the way up. And definitely a dollar in psychological resistance. So if you're on board for that, move it's a little less than a 2x from here to a dollar but for me i'd be curious as to where this looks in three years from now because a defining a potential defining moment for that bat is within the next few months here if we break all-time highs and it turns out all of all of this three-year consolidation was just just that consolidation <laughs> in the, before the bigger move um the 50 tone across is favorable i just can't get on board with something that's been ranging for three years my own personal qualms with it. Uh, the cloud illustrates that ranging effect to a great degree. It's never really been above the cloud for an extended period of time. Even though it is right now, you can see where the cloud wanted you to get in. You can see where there's support at the cloud here at 45 cents. Um, so overall trend is bullish. You could argue that this is a, some sort of markup phase consolidation between 40 and 65 cents. 
And I think if you're bullish and holding, you're right to be bullish and holding because this is um, sort of unprecedented for, for BAT at these prices to be consolidating like this. And if you look at the four hour cloud, if I was trading this, I'd be waiting for trend metrics to flip bullish again, and then it's go time for a long entry signal. If we look at BAT BTC, another interesting chart. Um, it's had these range wide ranges that broke up. All of that came crashing down. Another wide range that attempted to break up. All of that came cra crashing down. Right now, it looks like it really wants a bullish breakout um, because it had this massive multi-month bullish divergence. Price hit lower lows on less momentum. So you, you'd consider that waning bearish momentum, just as it did in mid-2019. Very similar situation. So the market was signaling people are probably done selling at those lows. Now it's moved into the cloud and is ready for a potential trend reversal. If it gets above the 200-day moving average at around 1,400 sats, if it gets around the yearly pivot at 1,700 sats, then it's most likely going to want to return to the previous consolidation zone between 2,000 and 3,000 sats. So again, if I was trading this, I'd be waiting for the bullish Kumo breakout on the daily. That'd be the first thing. Um, then is it above the 200? Then is it above the daily pivot? Then is it in this range of two to 3,000? Um, I think to expect anything above two to 3,000 sats is a bit much within the next six months. It's going to need some time. You know, this may even consolidate down here for another six months before breaking up. And I say that because historically it doesn't like highs. It doesn't like holding highs. It doesn't like pushing highs. For me, this represents people just rotating their bat into other stuff. You know, there's clearly speculative bullish rallies here, but for the most part, I think many people are just selling bat or rotating out of it. Now, if ETH fees remain infinity, then that should be bullish for bad because that supply is just going to be locked up because people can't move it. So that's 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 sickly the best case for <laughs> for uh, for bat is if ETH fees remain extremely high. If we look at bat ETH, also a reversal there, multi-month bullish divergence here, lower lows in price, higher lows in RSI, very similar sort of thing. It's breaking through the cloud hitting that mean reversion potential at the 200 day moving average. So I like resistance at all these VPVR levels at all of the yearly pivots. I'm not saying it's going to 001 ETH, which is a big psychological level as well. But if I was trading this, that's what I'd be watching. Can it break the cloud? Can it break the 200? Can it break these VPVR levels? Can it break the yearly pivots? Um, it's probably going to end up sitting somewhere around 01 and 015 just because that's where it's lived most of the time historically. So overall, Brave and Bat are cool. People like it. It has a use case. It has utility. Unfortunately, ETH fees are crippling that utility currently. Technicals are favorable, more favorable than they've been in a very long time for the USD pairs, and definitely hinting at trend reversals on the BTC and ETH pairs.